Yeah, I think, you know, the adjustment Steve has made, you know, with the pressure defense has just, um, I think it's made up for a lot of their offensive woes, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, they're a very good basketball team. I think they're, they're not a great half-court offensive team. And I think, you know, it, I went back and watched the Seton Hall game, and it was one of the better college games I've seen. But seeing the struggle scoring in the half court, um, the press, especially in this building, it just gives them an opportunity, uh, puts a little bit less pressure on their on their half court defense, and it gives them an opportunity to get easy transition points. And I think that's the biggest difference I've seen in them from you know watching them play at Miami. I watch them, uh, and then obviously the Big Ten game. So uh, you know that you know Paul Cliff. Um, McConnell and Mag, they, they all work really well as a group. And I think, you know, Cam Spencer is a really smart player out there that kind of knows its games. I just think the, the pressing has changed them from a half court team that you really knew what, what was coming at you the whole time and that you were going to have to score to a team that now it's a special preparation team that is in this building is, is tough. Uh, Coach, how, how big of a momentum change was that? that Julian Reese flagrant foul had? Um, yeah, the turnover was big, to be honest with you. The, fr the flagrant wasn't huge. I mean, I love the fact that he chased it down and, and went up and played aggressive. I thought that's the best Julian's looked in a long time. It looks like he's back from you know those 12 days that he missed. His legs look like they're there. Um, I thought his pick and roll defense was excellent. I thought he battled all night with Cliff. Um, that was the kind of Julian that you know was playing really well, and then obviously that injury at UCLA kind of derailed him a little bit. But it looks like you know he just had that look in his eye that, that he had before he got hurt. Um, Sean, beyond their defense, when you feel like flexibility, I don't know. Um, we're getting some good looks in the first half. I don't know. I think Ian making the three kind of relax us, considering the fact. I mean, I now know why Duke and Maryland are, are such hated rivals. I mean, Duke got down 22 to four, so they upstaged us by a point. We got down 21 to four, right? Yeah, Duke always messing with Maryland, I guess. Um, I don't know. These, you know, they're working hard. They're getting good looks. They're good offensive players. Um, this is the first time these guys have gone through this, so. You know, being on the road, being on the road, being on the road, battling tough crowds. I think that's what's great about this league is every, every night there's been a great crowd. Um, you know, sometimes schedule dictates how you play. I know Jerry hates that quote, but sometimes schedule dictates how you play. And right now we've had three tough games on the road. Um, we've played well at home. We just haven't been home that much. So I have the utmost confidence in these guys. I. I We'll get it going offensively again. I'm not. I'm not so worried. A little bit of exaggeration, but you talk about how when you practice, you're pretty much focusing almost solely on defense. I don't think I. I think I did mostly offense. So, yeah. So that, that probably was changed? not pretty good. Maybe I should hire somebody. As Jerry once tweeted, I should hire an offensive coordinator. I thought I did this year. I think I might fire him now. That must have been a long time ago. It was a long time. I remember all your tweets, Jerry. Coach, what went into starting Noah Bachelor over Don today? Don played really well the last two times he came off the bench and kind of got lost in the game a little bit. And he was able to come in and be a little freer, to be honest with you, instead of being such a focus on and having one of the best defenders on him. I wanted to try to maybe get one of their subs and just kind of get him going a little bit and just kind of give a little pressure off him. It was nothing big. He knew he was going to play the same amount of minutes. It's just maybe trying to get him lost so he can kind of have a, just a little bit more relaxed of a defender on him instead of the guys that he has been going against who have been locked down guys. And how do you think Noah did in the game? I think Noah did great. Yeah, Noah, you know, he didn't have a great stat line. Um, but, you know, for being a freshman in this environment, it's great experience for him. It'll pay dividends down the future. Kevin, you're familiar with Paul, obviously. I mean, how important is he to that team, especially now with, with Gio and Ron, uh, Ron Hopper gone? You know, we, we beat them. La I think we played them last year at home. Um, Seton Hall, 
uh, uh, sorry, um, I have to keep going back and forth. The uh, and we and I remember he was such a non-factor because Gio had the ball in his hands all the time. And then I remember watching the last eight games of Big Ten play with them, and I thought the difference in this team in their team last year and obviously this year is they gave the ball to Paul. Uh, Paul was a point guard in high school. He played for a great coach um, who taught him how, you know just how to play the game, and. He had he he affects the game. He was one of the better passers I've seen in college basketball in a long time. He's unselfish. He has great confidence. But I thought the move to him playing point guard last year was the difference uh, in the way they finished the season last year, and obviously the way they started this year. Um, Coach, how do you think the team kind of responded to you know having some of those long offensive droughts uh, on the defensive side of the ball, especially in the first half? I thought these guys responded great. I'm proud of them. We played absolutely horrible at Michigan, as bad as you can play. Um, I challenged them. They came into practice. Jameer and Don, these two guys, were such great leaders the last two days. Um, I think they've responded tremendous. What do you think will take to you know, break some of those offensive droughts when? Uh, Hopefully a home game. <laughs> when you go nine minutes without a, a point. Um, what is it like to finally see them drain a couple of shots towards the, the end of the first half? And I know I see them drain shots all the time. So you can ask them that. I think they they've had more stress on it than me because I I have I wouldn't let them let it fly if I didn't believe it believe in them. So um, I think I think we're all looking forward to getting home and and having a a home game. To be honest with you, who knows if we're down twenty one to four at home? Then you can ask me a different question. But I don't think we will be. Coach, what did you see from some of the turnovers tonight? Say that again, I couldn't hear you. What did you see from some of the turnovers tonight? What did I see from them? Yeah. Uh, I, they hurt us. But how, does, how, does that, how did that influence your offense? Do you think that's a general issue that this offense has had this season, or is it, is it just something trying to make things happen tonight? No, I think you got to give credit to Rutgers. I think their pressure defense was really good. Um, and again, I, I, I think it's the more we go through these games, the more confidence they're going to get in each other, the more confidence they're going to have playing against these type of defenses. Um, but I think you have to give Rutgers credit for that because I thought their defense was excellent. Uh, hey, Don, uh, do you feel like how, how do you feel like you know coming off the bench? Do you feel like you're able to like op open your game up a little bit more coming off the bench instead of being in the starter in five? Um, most definitely, it's an advantage coming off the bench sometimes. You know, you get the gauge and see the atmosphere and see where the energy needs to go um, on the court and what I need to provide for my teammates. So definitely, you know, that's a benefit. And uh, Jameer, like this, despite the offensive struggles in the first half, you guys <coughs> held still held record twenty four points and. Went to halftime for a seven point deficit. What are your thoughts on the way you guys competed on defense defense? It's still to keep the game within reach. Yeah, uh, we were just aggressive on both sides of the floor the way that we need to play. Um, we was able to have a next play mentality and really was able to, you know, own our matchups and really just trying to battle and compete. Um, for either of you guys, I mean, can you just explain to me what, what made Rutgers defense so disruptive and, and why was it so difficult for you guys? I mean, they're they're long and athletic. Um, you know, they were in the passing lanes. Um, we had a hard time taking care of the ball tonight, as you can see. But um, yeah, they were just there. We got to give credit to them. They're a great defensive team. Um, we just have to be stronger with the ball, getting um, better angles for our passes in the future. Jameer, uh, from your perspective as a point guard, what's kind of contributing to these long scoring droughts that you guys have, have faced the last few games? Uh, I would just say just our movement. Uh, you know, whether that's um, being physical in the screening or. You know, just being predictable and, you know, not moving the ball side to side. We've been working on it. Um, I feel like we took a step in the right direction today. Anything else for the players? Anything else for the coach? Do you anything to eat before you leave around here? I, I, I didn't eat. I love, I actually love eating with these guys. They don't like, they don't like when I eat with them because everybody gets a little quieter and a little tense <laughs> and they don't joke as much, so. But I enjoy it because I enjoy being around them. But I did, I snuck out last night and I grabbed real Italian food, Cher. And 
the lady, the, the poor lady looked at me like I was nuts. I kept ordering stuff and ordering stuff and ordering stuff. And I got, I got to go stuff because my wife said I better bring her home somewhere. I was going to get divorced. So, yes, I did sneak out and cheat last night, Jerry. I did. Thanks, everybody.